love the message is a heart at rest. Uh, and I believe that this is something that each one of us can take hold of. Uh, a heart that is resting in the Lord and a heart that's trusting in the Lord. But before we begin, uh, the Holy Spirit spoke to me about, about 30 minutes ago, and he said, I want you to start with this prayer. And, and so this is the, the way that I'm going to pray. Not only that the word of God will come forth tonight with power and boldness uh, through Brother Fred, uh, but that mm -hmm. our hearts will be receptive and our ears will be open to hear the voice of the Lord speak to us individually. And I believe that there is something for each one of us in this message tonight that we need to hear tonight. Uh, but this is, the, this is the prayer that he told me to pray. And that is to stop the thievery of the devil in each one of our lives. To stop the thievery. You know, the enemy, in John 10, it says that the thief comes to steal, kill, and to destroy. And Jesus said, but I have come to give you life and to give you life more abundantly. And so I'm going to start this message tonight with doing what the Holy Spirit is telling me to do. And that is I bind up the enemy's plan over any of your lives any of your family's lives right now in the name of Jesus. No more thievery. That's what he spoke to me in Jesus' name. That the enemy cannot steal your joy. The enemy cannot steal your health. The enemy cannot steal your finances. The enemy cannot steal that abundant life that Jesus came to give us. And so what I speak, in the name of Jesus, I speak according to the word of God. I speak according to the spirit of God. And I say, well, so be it. Let it be that there's no more thievery in your life and in your family in the name of Jesus. And that's including finances. That's including uh, your bodies. That's including your minds. No more thievery. Did you know that when a person worries or has um, any type of doubt or unbelief, that that's thievery? That's the, the, the thievery of the devil coming against your mind. And so in the name of Jesus, no more thievery in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, as, as Sherry said uh, tonight, the title of the message is... Uh, a heart at rest and we all need to have our heart at rest and there are so many things in the world that uh, uh, lock us into chaos and difficulty mm -hmm. uh, but all of that uh, comes to keep us from hearing uh, the word of God from hearing God speak to us our faith will arise your faith will arise when you hear the Lord speak to you Amen. when you hear his word then your faith will arise. And where does that come? Well, your faith is in your heart uh, because it's a spiritual force and that's where your faith arises. So faith is not in your intellect uh, and, and striving for faith doesn't work. It comes from being aware of the presence of the Lord and listening uh, to him. And so when we get busy, or we get uh, our focus on other things than the Lord, then that distracts us and, and turns us away from the things of God. Now you can love the you can love the Lord with all your heart, but you can get busy, or you can worry about the things, uh, the problems that you face. I know we all face problems, and so what are we going to do when we face problems? We're all going to have them. Uh, be nice if we didn't. Uh, but I, I've been around long enough to know that there are going to be problems that uh, crop up from time to time. And what are we going to do when we face those problems? Well, if we have doubt and unbelief, it's going to separate us from the very presence of God. And so we want to talk about the rest uh, of God. And it's a rest that's in the heart. 
you know, Jesus said in Matthew 11, verses 28 and 29, come unto me, all ye that are uh, that mm -hmm. labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Uh, but it's not uh, the rest that, that the world gives, because the rest uh, that the world gives is when you don't have any problems and you're not uh, having anything to face, then there's a rest you can enter into in the natural. But he gives you a rest, uh, even though you've been uh, doing a lot of other things and there are a lot of things to encounter and, and deal with. He gives you rest uh, in that kind of a situation. He said, learn of me. Uh, my yoke is easy. And so joining up with Jesus, and that's really what we're talking mm -hmm. about tonight, uh, joining up with him, partnering with him, and, and learn of him. Uh, he's humble. He has a humble heart. Uh, uh, the King James says, lowly in heart. Other translations say, uh, meek in heart. Meek mm -hmm. and, and uh, lowly in heart. And uh, but but it's uh, he has humility in the heart, and that's where he found rest, and that's where we find our rest. It's not in the intellect, but it's in the in the heart. And if we have, uh, if we're worrying about situations, then it's going to be hard for us to listen uh, to the Lord mm -hmm. and to hear His word. When we hear the Holy Spirit speak to us, then that's going to cause faith to arise in us. And so we need to turn aside. You know, Moses mm -hmm. turned Turn aside when he saw the burning bush. He turned aside and he heard the voice of the Lord and the Lord called him and, and sent him on an assignment. And, and we all need to do that. We need to turn aside from the things in the world uh, because the world wants to give you bad news and think things are hard mm -hmm. and it's going to be difficult. That, that's the basic message of the, the world and that it puts out on a continual basis. Things are hard. Things are getting harder. Uh, but I tell you, Jesus has uh, ease for you and rest for you. And Hallelujah. For you. And so it's that, that those are the things we're going to be focusing on tonight. And when we're at rest and, and at rest in the presence of the Lord, mm. we can hear from him. And we'll know what we're supposed to do. You know, when the problems come, it really matters what we do. Uh, if we get looking at the problems, the problems get bigger, bigger and, and bigger, bigger and, and bigger. bigger. And if we look at our provision to meet the problem, our provision seems so limited. Uh, and so the thing we are to look at, and of course, we're to do this all the time, look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. So we're to look at Jesus. So God gives us promises. Okay, so there are, there are problems that we will encounter in life, but God gives us promises. And with those promises, we will overcome the problems. And, and you only need one promise to overcome a problem. And I call it the silver bullet. You need the silver bullet, the promise <laughs> that God has for you that will overcome the problem problem. And so what is a promise? Well, a promise it is relational. It, it is given to you to deal with your situation. And what mm -hmm. a promise does, it invites you into fellowship with the Lord. It, uh, an invitation to fellowship with the Lord, to strengthen your relationship, and to strengthen your trust in the Lord. That's what the promise is, because, you know, in Romans 8, uh, verse 28, it says, all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. And so God can take any problem and every problem and turn them to your good. Now, God hmm. is good. He does good. Yes. He will withhold no good, good thing, thing from, from you. you. He does not bring negative things to you. He does not use negative things to teach you. He does not use sickness uh, to teach you. What he uses to teach you is his word mm -hmm. and his spirit. So God does not bring negative things against you, but he is there with you to help you overcome all things. You can overcome all things in Christ. Now, I want to go through a process, and, 
and, and to uh, uh, look at our thinking and how we think. And first of all, when I was uh, uh, 13 years old, I accepted Jesus Christ. And for about 20 years, uh, all I ever heard about was Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And then there was a, came a time when I began to hear about the Holy Spirit and I uh, learned about the Holy Spirit and I was baptized in the Holy Spirit. And then when I was baptized in the Holy Spirit, the first thing the Holy Spirit revealed to me was the Father, uh, and that I had a spiritual, that I had a heavenly Father and a relationship with the heavenly Father who loved me. Okay, so we've got these three, uh, the Godhead, which is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And where does, where do they abide? Well, we know they're in heaven, but when you're born again, they all come and inside of you. So they are all inside of you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It says Christ in you, okay? So Jesus is in you, uh, and that's the hope of your glory. That's Colossians mm -hmm. 127. And so Jesus lives in you. Uh, and I'm talking about overcoming problems, but we're going to rest in the assurance that we have the fullness of the Godhead living in us mm -hmm. because Jesus Christ is the fullness of uh, the Godhead. That's Colossians 1, 9. Now, Jesus is also called the Prince of Peace. Hallelujah. Okay, the Prince mm -hmm. of Peace. And so inside of you, in your spirit, you have the spirit. The, uh, you have Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace. So you have peace inside of you. You also have the Heavenly Father and the Holy Spirit. Because in John 17, Jesus prayed that uh, we would be one with the Father and the Son, mm -hmm. and they would be one with us. And they So inside of you dwells uh, the fullness of the Godhead, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's important to know that they are in there. And so when a problem comes, you don't want to look to the outside. You want to look to the, the inside. inside. Oh, that's good. If you want to be aware of that. And it and when you get busy and worry and, and depressed about the problems that are coming uh, toward you, uh, then it, it's going to try to distract you away from the fact that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are all within you. So you need to be aware of that. So all of this busyness is going to distract you from the awareness of the God within you. Mm -hmm. Now, the God within you, the Godhead, the fullness of the Godhead that dwells within you is in you so that you can live the full and abundant life in, in the fullness of all the promises. So they're in there for a purpose so that you can live in the fullness of all that God has for you. But now also, it says, if we abide in his love, then we abide in him. And so Hallelujah. the whole Father, Spirit, and uh, Jesus live inside of us, and we live inside of them. Now, there's a reason that we live in them. Uh, we live in them so that we can practice being the new creature that we are, the, practice the new life. We've got everything inside of us, mm -hmm. the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now, we are in them, uh, and so now we can practice this new life, this being an overcomer, being victorious in every situation, that we can practice overcoming mm -hmm. every situation. We can practice day by day. We need to live this out and walk this out. Uh, the Holy Spirit, we're the our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Our body is the temple of the living God. Our body. Uh, so within us, we have all of this. We have everything that heaven has is inside of you. And the kingdom is within you, Jesus said. Okay. But we've got to be aware of it. We've got to be able to listen to the voice of the Lord. And then we can meet the problems head on. It's not about ignoring the problems. It's not about hoping they'll go away. It's not about sticking our head in the sand. Mm -hmm. There is a promise uh, to overcome any problem you face. The promise, see, is going to draw you in 
to fellowship with God mm. and a relationship with God and also that you can trust him if you know he's within you. And so let's look at this peace. Well, Jesus is the prince of peace. So you have peace within you. You have the prince of peace within mm. you. Hallelujah. Colossians 3.15 says that let this uh, peace rule your, your heart. heart. So it's peace that's going to rule your heart. So I'm talking about a rest in your heart. The uh, problems get big and we need to know how to deal with problems. And that's what this is about tonight, how to deal with the things that come. And, and I think about a process that I went through uh, and Sherry went through that uh, first, uh, when our first child came along, first baby came along, well, we thought we had problems and things to deal with, but later we had two other children. And so we had three young children and they were sick. And when a, when a flu would come through, one would get it, then the next would get it, and then the next would get it and they pass it on to us. And it just kept going like that. So we had certain problems when they, uh, when our children were little, but when they got bigger and they three teenagers and they're out driving cars and you, you know, the problems of the yeah, little babies yeah, yeah. Didn't, didn't compare with the problems of three teenagers to, in cars doing going out and doing the things that they were doing and but it, you know the problems accelerate over time and then uh, after that they, then they became adults and they got married and divorced and and uh, had children and, uh, and so the three children led to seven grandchildren and and the problems <laughs> accelerate and escalate and so you got to you've got to learn to deal with the first problem don't don't wait until the problems are overwhelming to you. You've got to begin today dealing with the situations, learning mm -hmm. how to deal with it. And it, it's a supernatural way to overcome your problems. Uh, you know, Romans 12, 11 says that we overcome by the blood of the lamb. That's mm -hmm. supernatural. Mm -hmm. It's incorruptible. It'll last forever. Mm -hmm. We overcome it. And we overcome by the word of your testimony. So these are spiritual things. We've got to learn to overcome problems. Now, see, a lot of people just focus on their natural abilities. And sure, you can overcome some problems with your natural abilities. But what we're talking about today is how to overcome any problem, every problem, oh, supernaturally. And you can do that. And that's by realizing, by staying at rest. If you get worked up, Let's say somebody at work is uh, pushing buttons in, in you and getting you upset. Let's just think about that kind of a problem for a minute. So they know all the problems to push. Uh, they know all the buttons. To push. I mean, all, all the buttons to push to cause you to be upset. There might be a supervisor. It might be a, a coworker, uh, whatever it is. You, you've got to deal with that situation. Uh, and so how do you deal with it? Well, you're a spiritual being. Don't, don't think of yourself as natural and you're going to go face to face and fight and fight and fight and, and not even in your mind. Don't fight in your mind with, with mm, them. That's uh, good. Yeah, and don't, uh, don't fight in the middle of the night and think, oh, I wish I'd said that or mm -hmm. uh, tomorrow I'm going to say this. Mm -hmm. uh, how to deal with problems? Well, what, what do we need to do? Well, you need to find the silver bullet. You need to get at rest and realize that the fullness of the Godhead uh, dwells within you. You need to be in rest so that you're aware of his presence within you, of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, so that you can overcome the problem. See, in 1992, on December the 2nd, mm. Sherry was going through some physical tests uh, she was having some medical issues and going through some medical tests with her doctors. And on that day, I was praying for her because that's what you got to do when you face a problem. Yeah. You, you, you've got prayer power to overcome that. And, and so as I was praying about her and we didn't know what the situation was because the results hadn't come in, but, but I heard a voice from heaven. And the voice from heaven said, we have the victory over this. Mm -hmm. Now, this was the first time I had this revelation, understanding that this voice that spoke to me and said, we, I knew that the we 
was the Father, Father the, the Son, Son, the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit, Jerry, and me. That Hallelujah. We were the we uh, that the Holy, uh, that I was hearing about. And it said, we have the victory over this. Okay. So that was on the December the 2nd. And then uh, on December the 30th, and I, I know I've told this story to you, but I'm telling it a little bit different this time because of that we that was in me and the we that was in Sherry. And I knew that that was the first time I had the revelation that they were all there on our behalf, causing us to have the victory over that situation. And then on December the 30th, which was 28 days later, I was out praying, walking in the woods, and then Sherry came and picked me up. And when I got in the car, she said, the doctors have called, they have the or test results in, and they said, I have terminal cancer, and I will only, I can only live six months, will be the longest I'll live, six months, and I said, we have the victory Amen. over this, I said, and, and I knew when I said that, I was talking about the Father, the Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ, Sherry, and I, we, uh, five, have the victory over this, now, uh, it's not the time to begin uh, seeking God when the problem gets there. You need to be uh, quiet enough and at rest so that you hear uh, the instructions from heaven. Mm -hmm. and, and don't wait until you face a big problem. But go ahead and be praying today. Realize today that, that you need to be at rest. You need to be at peace and, and rule your heart with God's peace, not the peace that comes from not having problems because I don't know we ever get to that point, mm -hmm. but have a peace inside of you that comes from the Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ. And, and sure enough, then on uh, January the 8th, the Lord healed her. That was December the 30th. The doctor said she was all, all three doctors said she was going to die within six months. January the 8th, the Lord healed her of terminal cancer. Mm -hmm. See, we'd already heard. We, we, I, we were close enough to the Lord that we heard, and Sherry heard some other verses, and, and uh, she has given you her testimony, and other times she'll give it again. But tonight I'm focusing on the we that's within me, and the we that is within you, and that's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And you've got to uh, be at rest uh, so that you can hear uh, what they say, because when the Lord speaks to you, when the Lord speaks to you, it will cause faith to arise in you. And that's exactly what happened on that December the 2nd. Faith arose in me because I knew we had the victory over Hallelujah. this. Hallelujah. I, didn't, I didn't know what the this was, but I knew who the we was. The we was the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, Sherry, and I. But see, I had to be quiet enough. I had to be close enough to the Lord that, and, and to hear his voice. If I was so busy and so anxious uh, about Sherry going through medical tests that I forgot to pray, I didn't pray, and I didn't seek the Lord, then, then I wouldn't have heard that, and faith wouldn't have arisen in me, and on January the 8th, 1993, she wouldn't have been healed from terminal cancer, but because we had spent time with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, uh, we could hear his voice. We, we were at rest. We were at peace. Jesus said, come unto me, and I'll give you rest. But you know, this is not natural rest, because to enter into his rest, you have to believe. Uh, Hebrews says to enter into this rest, uh, the people who do not believe cannot enter into this rest, because the heart at rest is a heart where Faith is. Yes. Oh, that's good. That's, that's good. where faith is. And Woo, faith you need to comes. write that down. Faith, Hallelujah. Faith comes Let's from hearing faith. the Lord, Woo. hearing his voice. And, and so you've got you've got to believe, <laughs> glory to get I mean, to God yeah, that he God. is, that he exists, and that he's a rewarder Water. in you. Uh, of you and that he lives inside of you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Jesus prayed that way, that we would be one with them. And that's powerful. When you get that revelation and that understanding that, that they are one with you, they abide in you, and you abide, abide in, in them. them. So then, you know, in John 15, 7, Jesus said, 
if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you, you will. will. You, you, don't shall even, be done. you don't even have to ask and it will be done for you. And this is prayer. And so that's where I'm uh, moving now. I'm moving into this prayer, into prayer. Because see, Romans 8, 26, and I've said this before, Romans 8, 26 says we don't know how to pray. But the Holy Spirit knows how to pray. And Jesus knows how to pray. Mm. And they will teach you how to pray on a particular prayer. Mm. And the reason I bring this up, and it's so important, is that Sherry knew how to pray tonight. Uh, do you remember that? That she started us off with a prayer because she was led by the Spirit of God on what to pray for all of us tonight. Now, that's a, uh, a prayer inspired by the Lord. And, and that is a powerful prayer. Uh, and another way to look at it, it's a crafted prayer right. uh, where you where you take time to hear from the Lord and, and you pray that prayer uh, that in your natural mind, you do not know how to pray, but the Holy Spirit knows how to pray and he will lead you and guide you. Jesus is the word of God. And in the word of God, when it comes alive to you by the spirit of God, will teach you how to pray. So Jesus is here to teach you how to pray. The Holy Spirit, Spirit is here to teach you how to pray. You let the Holy Spirit bring the living word of God uh, to you, and, and you will know how to pray. And that's a crafted prayer. And, and a good example to look at a crafted prayer is Acts chapter 4. And uh, Peter and John had been beaten and put in prison because they were boldly proclaiming Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus. And so they, they were released from prison and told not to uh, proclaim the name of Jesus anymore. So what did they do? They prayed this crafted prayer. They referenced uh, uh, David and the Psalms and about how the heathen would rage and all. And, and mm -hmm. so you can look at the verses that they that they repeated in this prayer. It's a very powerful prayer. Uh, and so I, I'm not saying pray this prayer, but look at the prayer, how powerful it was. And, and how do we know? Well, it ended. So what they were doing in the prayer was basically say, give us more boldness to preach Jesus. Amen. So, Amen. so they were arrested Amen. and beaten uh, because they were boldly preaching Jesus. And, and what do they as soon as they get out of prison, they pray for more boldness to preach the name of Jesus more and for Jesus to stretch forth his hand and heal people. And then what happened? The whole building shook. Hallelujah. That was a powerful Hallelujah. prayer. Hallelujah. I'm talking about a powerful prayer. When you realize that you are a partner with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and they all live inside of you, and they're, uh, they're there for the Holy Spirit and Jesus to show you how to pray. Uh, now, see, many of us pray, oh, help me, Lord. Help get rid of this problem. Well, that's not a crafted prayer. That, that's not a prayer that you've taken any time to uh, decide and find out, discover. That's the better word. Mm -hmm. uh, you discover. haven't taken time to discover how God tells you to pray. Because, see, you don't know how to pray, but the Holy Spirit knows how to pray. So you need to listen to the Holy Spirit. And you don't know how to pray, but Jesus knows how to pray. So you spend time in his word and you find uh, how to pray. And that's what those uh, apostles did in Acts chapter four. And they prayed this powerful, and I call it a crafted prayer. You look at it and it'll show you how to how to craft a prayer. But it's 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 not a formula, not at all, not mm -hmm. a formula. But when they finished praying, uh, people were, were saved and they were healed. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and the first thing that happened, though, the building shook. Wouldn't you like to pray powerful prayers mm -hmm. like that? Realize that you are a partner with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let them speak to you. So you've got to get the busyness uh, away from you. You've got to... to, to spend time quietly in the presence of the Lord. Let them speak to you. Uh, let the Holy Spirit speak to you and tell you things, tell you how to pray. And, and then you can pray and change your situation. Okay, so a big problem arose. Well, what are you supposed to do about it? Take time to spend time uh, in the presence of God and there, see, 
Be aware of the presence of God. And there you will find out how to pray mm -hmm. and how to believe and your faith will arise. And, and so it's not a formula. No, it, it's not a formula. Well, I'm going to pray this prayer. Oh, it worked last time. So I'm going to pray the same prayer this time. No, it's not the same problem. It's not the same uh, atmosphere. It's not the same environment. Things change and we've got to flow with the Holy Spirit and let the Holy Spirit show us how to pray and be a partner with the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Don't be uh, by yourself out there uh, and thank you, you're going to bring down all the enemies and bring down all the problems and handle all the problems. No, you need to realize that you are part of something much bigger than you. You have within you the fullness of the Godhead, and that will cause you to be able to overcome any obstacle and, and to be victorious in every situation. And you are in uh, <clears throat> You abide in the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> and as, as a result of that, you can practice the new life every day. You can mm -hmm. practice being mm -hmm. an overcomer. Oh, I'm going to be an overcomer today yeah, yeah, yeah. because I abide in the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And it says, as Jesus is, yes, so are we. As he is, so are we on the earth. And so learn how to do the impossible, learn how to live like Jesus on the earth in awareness of God being within you, the fullness of God being within you, and you abiding within the fullness of God. It's a, it, Don't get caught up by the news. The news is going to uh, distract you from the things that are important the things that will make you an overcomer. Don't be distracted by the mm -hmm. problems at work or the problems in your children or your, uh, or your spouse body. or your uh, body. Don't, don't be distracted and get away from your connection. See, you have a lifeline Hallelujah. To, to the fullness of God that dwells within you when you take time to be at rest and, and at peace and keep your heart at rest and at peace. Jesus said, I, had a, I have a humble heart. I'm meek. I, I'm teachable. I, I, I'm a disciple. Mm -hmm. I, you know, you never stop learning. Oh, don't ever get to the point where you, I know it all. I don't have to, I don't have to learn anything else. I know that you, then all of a sudden you don't become a disciple. You, you're no longer a disciple when you stop learning. We all have to be learning um, uh, he said, if you want to follow me, then uh, then take up my cross. Then you'll be my disciple. You do my mm -hmm. works, you'll be my disciple. And so we need to be like our master, Jesus. And, and he lived a sacrificial life. And we need to be, the disciple needs to be like the master. And we need to live a, disciple, a, a sacrificial life. And we need to be thankful to God. God is moving in each of you. Amen. He's doing great and mighty things in your life. He wants to do great things, things that are beyond what you can even comprehend or imagine or ask him. He still wants to do more and he lives inside you. The fullness of the Godhead is within you and you abide in the fullness of the Godhead mm. and you can ask what you want to and it will be done. Ask what you will and it shall It'll be, be done. done because you abide in him and he abides in you and he wants you to be fruitful. He wants your prayers to be answered so the Father will be glorified. All right, Hallelujah. I'm gonna turn it over to Sherry. Hallelujah. I want, uh, hallelujah, I want to just uh, uh, for a few moments just uh, go back over uh, what Brother Fred said about uh, those three living on the inside of us. And I want to, I had a vision as he was speaking. And what I saw, I saw the Father who is love. I saw the Father who is love. Hallelujah. If you need more love, you've already got it because he's there. He's there. He's standing with you. He's standing around you. Hallelujah. He is in you. And, and so the father, he's love. Uh, so you've got that love. Hallelujah. Uh, Jesus is the prince of peace. So you have peace. 
And, and what I saw, the vision that I saw was Jesus going up the hill with carrying his cross. I saw him carry the cross up to Mount Calvary. And this is what the Holy Spirit spoke to me uh, as I was seeing this, the Jesus going up the hill of Calvary. This is what I heard the Holy Spirit say to me is that on that cross was every problem that you or I will ever have. It was on that cross. Can you see anxiety on the cross? Can you see worry on the cross? Can you see doubt and unbelief on the cross? Can you see cancer and sickness and pain on the cross? Can you see uh, any type of mental illness on the cross? Woo! Hallelujah! That's what I saw. I saw him carrying that cross up the, the hill of Calvary. And he did it for you and he did it for me so that we don't have to put up with the thievery of the enemy. I don't think Gwen was here when I, when I spoke that all thievery has been bound up and destroyed in Jesus' name from your lives. No more thievery in Jesus' name. And then we have the Father, the Father's love. We have the Prince of Peace. That's when I saw that vision. And then we have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the power of God. You've got the power of God inside of you to be an overcomer and to be a new creature, to be a disciple, to do what God tells you to do. Hallelujah. To be, to, to be what God wants you to be, you have that power. To live like Jesus. To live like Jesus. Amen. Amen.